I'm going to use the kinetics lab uh, on investigating the uh, rate law and Arrhenius parameters of the thiosulfate hydrochloric acid reaction. Okay, so how to process all of this data and determine the uh, activation energy was done in a previous video. Uh, I'll link that uh, with this one. Uh, what I'm going to do here is show you how to take into the experimental errors, so the experimental uncertainties, uh, how to process those using Google Sheets and a uh, Google app called or an app for uh, Google called um, Plotly. All right. The reason you'll need Plotly is if you if you uh, obtain experimental data in which case, in which that there is uh, errors, so random uh, random errors or uncertainties. Let's say in your uh, glassware, you're going to need to account for all of those. So glassware uh, balances, stopwatches, all that sort of thing needs to be accounted for in terms of your IA. So. Um, the easiest way to do this is with error bars. Now, uh, oftentimes in Chem IA, there's uncertainty in both the X and Y direction. So, uh, what we've done in the past is we've looked at a way, okay, how about we combine, let's say, the temperature uncertainty with the rate constant uncertainty, for example, in this lab. So, um, if you are able to calculate percent uncertainty in your independent variable, percent uncertainty in your dependent variable, all right, Add the two of them together, and I've called this combined total uncertainty. Um, what I would do is, you know, I'm going through, you can see I'm, I'm fixing my significant figures in all of my columns here, making sure they match. You would want to make sure you do this before you submit anything to me or to IBO um, because we just need to make sure that you're aware of significant figures. So add the, uh, add the, the Chrome app Plotly, or you can just go to the web address there. Um, this is a uh, this is a program that's going to let you make error bars. If you have Excel, uh, you're free to use Excel. Uh, Google Sheets right now can't handle error bars, so we uh, we're going to make use of this. So you can see I have temperature and rate constant. I have total percent combined uncertainty. All right. Um, for example, the the rate constant uncertainty, that's, uh, you can see above, I've done three trials, all right, and I've done all kinds of uh, data processing earlier that you can watch that previous video for. Uh, basically for, you know, trials one, two, and three, I would have averaged the, uh, the readings, all right, I would have taken, let's say, a, a half range method type thing, you can go back and have a look at all that. Um, Basically, the end the end result or the the point of this lab is to calculate the activation energy. So I'm um, you can see right now I'm creating the Arrhenius plot data. So that's one over t versus ln k. All right, I'm correcting all the significant figures there. I need to transfer all of that data later on to Plotly. Okay, because Plotly is going to allow me to uh, graph this data, but it's also going to allow me to insert error bars. And I need to be able to insert the error bars so that I can make a determination of the uncertainty uh, in the final trend, so in the slope of the resulting graph. All right, so you can see I've got my uh, 1 over t and ln k values transferred into Plotly. By default, you can see on the left-hand side it says line plot. I'm later going to switch that to scatter. If I click the button that said error bars, um, it, you can see that it opened up that EX, EY option. So I'm not going to use percent uncertainty. Now I'm going to use absolute uncertainty. So to change percent uncertainty back to absolute uncertainty, all right, uh, convert your percent to a decimal, multiply by the, in this case, the ln k, the y value. All right, these values, regardless of whether they're positive or negative, are going to be entered as the error bars. So what they will do is they show the range of possible values each of those uh, y coordinates could have. So I'm going to switch this to scatter plot, and you're going to need to sign in. If you hit that Google Plus button, even though Google Plus is disabled under GNSPES, uh, it'll still allow you to log in. All right, so I'm just going to call this IA demo. Right. There may be a few other uh, notifications, that sort of thing, that pop up here. You can either uh, close out of them, send the links to yourself, share them, that sort of thing. But you can see my, my trend data is on here, and the error bars are as shown. So each of those error bars, what that means is that the possible value, for example, for the point furthest to the left, 
uh, ranges almost from negative 7 down to almost uh, negative 8.5. So that means due to the uncertainties in however I measured that point, uh, the possible value lies anywhere in there. All right, so error bars are just a nice visual way of representing uncertainty. Now, what is it that I need to do with this? First of all, I'm going to want to uh, put a trend line through the data points. All right, so uh, in Plotly, it's called fit data. I'm going to say add fit to this trace. The default option is linear, um, and then you're going to want to go to an advanced. It says use error data to uh, weight fit. Even though the software can do it, IB is very specific that they want to see how you process the uncertainty. You have to turn that off. So hit OK, run the fit. All right, my fit is very good. Um, so I'm going to hit OK here. All right, you can, if you like, you can copy the slope and intercept from there. All right, and I can see that uh, if I hover over, I can view any of those data points. I can see the error bar range, that sort of thing. Just in case you want to be able to work with the slope and intercept later on, uh, you can always use the slope intercept commands that I'm showing here uh, back in Sheets, and they'll run the exact same linear regression on the data set for you. Okay, it's the only thing that Sheets can't do here is the error bar thing, and if you're going to make a, a especially a linear graph um, for IA, you want to make sure that you express that error somehow, and it just um, error bars seem to be the the easiest way to do it, even though it looks a little bit complicated. All right, so I'm going to square away my significant figures, that sort of thing. Um, you may want to pause this and have a uh, have a read through, but basically, I need to come up with a way to express my uh, uncertainty in my slope. All right, so the slope of my graph is illustrating the trend in my data. All right, so how can I do that? I'm going to use what's called the max min slope method. So the maximum slope on my uh, plot with the error bars would range from the top error bar of the lowest data point to the bottom error bar of the highest x value data point. All right, so you can see how this slope in the red line has a much, or this is a much greater slope than that in the blue line. The minimum slope is the bottom of the first error bar to the top of the last error bar. That's shown in green. Okay, you can see this slope is much more shallow than either the red or the blue lines that are already present on the screen. If I calculate the slopes of, e of the red and green lines and subtract the green from the red, divide by 2, that's what's known as the half range method. So this is our typical way of handling uncertainties uh, in averages, that sort of thing. All right. So the half range method of the max and min slopes gets labeled the uncertainty in the experimental slope, so the blue line. All right, this seems like quite a bit of work just to get one number, all right? And this is by no means the only way you have to express your uh, error and uncertainty. Uh, in ChemIA, it's, it just may be the most concrete method that we can offer. Um, you just need to make sure that your error and uncertainty is somehow present in any type, final type concluding value. All right, so you need to calculate the max and min points manually all right so essentially you get the value of the error bar and either in sheets excel uh, on your calculator or whatever you like all right you can see that that point um, the y value is negative 7.72 and the uncertainty is uh, or sorry the error bar is 0.68 so in order to get all the way up to the top of that error bar, 7.72 negative. All right, uh, and I'm going to add the 0 0.68. I'm going to come up to negative 7.04. So you can see that would be the top end of the error bar, and that would be the first point in the maximum slope line. So I've done, I've gone ahead and done all that that work. Just omitted it from the video for time. I've entered them in as new plots, essentially, that'll go in columns four, five, 4 and 5 and 6 and 7, respectively. 
you can see them show up in Plotly on a new graph. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to give this a new title. I'll call it something about with uncertainties, that sort of thing. All right, and then I'm going to add a fit to each of the series that I that I was working with. Um, I'm going to go back and correct some spelling here first. Okay, so first of all, I would probably add a fit back to my column two. So this is the the original data that I worked. This is my experimental data. So I'm going to run the fit. It's going to give me the exact same values that I had before. Now I'm going to go to column five. All right, I'm going to get the next uh, the next series of data. Now this is going to see you'll see an R squared value of one. There's only two points in this line, so it's a perfectly straight line. All right, um, I'm going to do the same thing for the minimum slope. Right, and I'm going to get all three slopes on my or displayed on my graph. So it's a little messy right there. I should have tried to move them around a little bit. Um, what's more important is that I actually have the values. So for right now, I'm just going to copy the numerical value uh, back into Sheets. So I'm essentially done with that Plotly graph now. So uncertainty in the slope via the half range method is negative uh, 1,159.5. Okay, the slope of the original graph was negative 1,783. Okay, so there's I can tell right away that there's quite a bit of uncertainty in my final answer. All right, um, I'm then going to propagate this down to activation energy because remember that was the point of this lab was to determine the activation energy. The activation energy um, we get from analyzing the, or working with the slope. So the slope of the Arrhenius plot uh, is equal to negative EA over R. So I'm going to need to take the numerical value of the slope multiply it by the negative gas constant. So then that'll give me the experimental activation energy. So uh, you've seen me get the absolute uncertainty in the slope. I've converted that to a percent uncertainty in the slope. The percent uncertainty in the slope is also the same percent uncertainty in the activation energy because the activation energy is simply uh, determined by multiplying by the gas constant. The gas constant is a constant, so we say that there is no uncertainty in the value. So any uncertainty in the slope transfers directly to the activation energy. So the absolute uncertainty in the activation energy is 9.63. Considering the measured value of this, or the calculated value, is 14.8, this is not the greatest uh, result. Now, this is going to pose a little bit of a significant figures problem for me. Um, so uh, we'll we'll deal with that in a second here. After all is said and done, I'm going to want to compare my experimental value to the literature value, if available. Most of your labs will not have uh, most. Sorry, I guess most of your your IAs will not have a literature value to compare to. If you did, you would be expected to uh, compare your literature value to your experimental value and comment on any deviation. All right, so in order to do that, um, I'll take this all the way to completion. All right, my percent error here going to be experimental minus literature divided by the literature value um, or vice versa, it's an absolute value either way. So I'm going to I'm going to walk away here with a 68% error. All right? And how I would report my final answer here is I would say that the activation energy was determined to be um, excuse me, uh, 15 kilojoules per mole, so I'm going to have to do some rounding here. Um, however, if I were to apply the absolute uncertainty, I'm going to have to round that to 10, so this would give me a range experimentally determined to be anywhere from 5 to 25 kilojoules per mole. Now, here's where the analysis uh, of random versus systematic error comes in. Seeing as my calculated activation energy, even with the, the uncertainty applied, does not capture the literature value of 47. That means that that means my uh, experiment has a systematic error present in it. And no matter how many times I re replicate the experiment, I'm not, I won't be able to capture the true value. 
meaning that an experimental redesign is necessary in order to uh, get a more accurate result. Right. Random uncertainties are reduced by repeated trials. So if my if my literature value was had been captured by my activation energy once I put the error bars on it, or once my sorry by my experimental calculation once I put the error bars on it, I could say if I did more trials and more trials and more trials, eventually my calculated activation energy should agree with the literature value. Seeing as there's a systematic error present, it doesn't matter how many trials I do. So I would have to re I would have to go back, examine my procedure, how would I modify it, how could I expand upon it so that in the future um, I got a more accurate result. The plotly file um, is linked here so that you can go have a look at it. What I've also done is on Moodle um, the links to both the YouTube videos, so the original experimental video and any work that I've done is all present for you. Please come and see me if you have any questions.